Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm your host, Ricky Green, here for Tide Talk Sports. And you know that we love following recruiting here on our channel. And that's exactly what we're talking about in today's episode of Tide Talk. I'm joined by Rivals.com National Director of Recruiting, Mike Farrell. And we are going to run the game. You're not going to want to miss a single minute of today's episode of Tide Talk. And we'll get started right now. I want to start out today's episode of Tide Talk with a question before we get Big Mike in here like we always do. Mike and I uh, took a moment during today's uh, episode to talk about Ty Simpson, one of the best quarterbacks in the country in that 2022 class. He'll be committing soon, uh, and it'll either be Alabama or Clemson. So get in the comment section right now and let me know what you think. Where will Ty Simpson commit in just a few short days, I want you to give me an A for Alabama or a C for Clemson. And now that we've got that all done and wrapped up, let's get straight in to our segment with today's guest, Big Mike Farrell, the National Director of Recruiting for Rivals.com. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, this is a historic class for Alabama on paper. Um, most points ever in Rivals.com history. We've, we've been doing a points mathematical system since 2007, I believe. And before that, it was just sort of subjective. Um, but again, it's going to have a lot to live up to the 2017 class, which I, I feel is the best class uh, before this one on paper. Um, and also, you know, probably the best class when it comes to players matriculating and, and, and having success, not only at the college level, but, uh, you know, beyond that, because you look at that class, you got Henry Ruggs, Devante Smith, um, you know, a heck of a wide receiver group. Jerry Judy was in that class as well as a wide receiver. You got two attack of Valoa and, and Mac Jones, a quarterback. Jedrick Wills was one of the um, elite offensive linemen along with Alex Leatherwood and on and on it goes. Uh, Najee Harris, of course, the running back in that class. So it's going to take a lot to live up to that. Um, but this this class has an opportunity to do so. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. That 21 class was loaded top to bottom. Um, you know, you and I spoke a minute before we started recording, talking about how it was a defensive class. And really, it's just what the doctor ordered uh, in order for Nick Saban to continue this dynasty that he has down in Tuscaloosa. Um, really, really impressed with the job that they did. Had most of that class wrapped up and signed on early signing day uh, and weren't quite done then. We saw big time flips um, after that, talking about JoJo Earl being one, um, went ahead and locked up that signature on the LOI of Kamar Wheaton. So really just an all around incredible class. But the focus now has shifted uh, to 2022 and there's a couple of big time 2022 recruits that I wanted to ask you about. I know that I've seen you cover one of these guys already, but I want to get your thoughts for all the folks here that are watching on the channel uh, about Walter Nolan, the big elite defensive lineman uh, that's from up in Tennessee, actually not too far away from where I'm at. What are your thoughts on Mr. Nolan, his game, uh, his recruitment, and maybe even where you're leaning as far as where he will end up? Yeah, I, I think this is going to come down to uh, Alabama and LSU based on early discussions with Walter. He's our number four player in the country. He was number one. He switched schools a little bit and, and didn't get to play, um, you know, a full season. So it's one of those situations where he has a chance to finish as a number one player in this, in this class. Uh, he's battling for that number one defensive tackle spot with uh, Big Bear Alexander from Texas who's going to Georgia. He's kind of a must get, I think. For Alabama in this class, um, you know, because he's a rare talent. He reminds me of, of Rashawn Gary athletically, reminds me a little of Dexter Lawrence as well. Um, you know, and those two guys obviously ended up being first rounders and having, you know, tremendous college careers. So, you know, Florida, Georgia, Clemson, uh, Ohio State, Michigan, Tennessee, a lot of schools involved with him. But uh, I think this is going to come down to Alabama and LSU. And I would give Alabama the edge right now. You know, you mentioned Georgia just a moment ago, speaking about another prospect, and there uh, is kind of along the lines of this next young man that I'm going to ask you about, 
one time was committed to the University of Alabama, Jeremiah Alexander, uh, now at least from all the research and the people that I've talked to, looks to kind of be an Alabama-Georgia scuffle for this young man. Give me your thoughts on his recruitment and where it stands and what you think about his game as well. Yeah, he committed, you know, very early. And, and I think it's a situation where, you know, sometimes you commit so early to the school everyone expects you to commit to. And and maybe you don't feel like you're taking advantage of the process. Maybe you feel uh, incomplete that you haven't done all your homework. So when I talked to him, um, you know, he said that Georgia was the reason why he decommitted because he had so much interest in them and he was hearing from them and, and liked what they had to say. Um, so it, it's probably going to come down to Georgia and Alabama for him. He's an in-state kid. I mean, you know, listen, we've, we've had a few incidents, obviously, where, where you know, uh, guys like Perkins and Justin Ross have left the state, um, Jameis yep. Winston, years ago. But it doesn't happen that often. So, you know, I, I think right now uh, Georgia has the momentum. of we're, we're a long way from signing day. Uh, and I think Alabama's momentum will swing back with him, you know, as we get closer to his decision. Awesome. Good stuff. And, you know, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about being able to speak to a national guy like you. Um, sometimes there's a slight difference in what uh, a recruit like Alexander or any other recruit might tell a recruiting analyst that's covering a specific team. And you can really kind of get to the bottom of the story. Uh, with a national guy like yourself. That's the first that I'd heard that Georgia was really the reason for him making that move to decommit and open things back up. Um, you know, prior to hearing you say that, I thought it was more along the lines of wanted to focus on my high school season, but it's definitely different. Um, some of the answers you get when you're talking to a national guy and then a team guy that specifically only covers one team. Seems like sometimes these prospects want to – uh, almost sugarcoat things, for lack of a better term, with the team guys, whereas with a national guy like yourself, they really just cut it uh, down to the truth and let you know what the deal is. And it, it depends on how the questions are asked and where the, they're led to. And, you know, I've worked team sites before I became national years and years ago, and, and my my readers want to hear what he likes about the school I'm covering, you know, and and I always get quotes about the other schools, but most of my focus is going to be on that particular school. So it can be skewed that way. If you ask a couple questions about one school, um, then the kid sort of gets it in his head that, oh, this guy's, you know, a, a Georgia guy or whatever. A and then they'll tell you what they want to hear because they're 16, 17 year old kids. So what I did after he decommitted, you know, he and I follow each other on Twitter. And that's how mostly I, I can communicate with these guys, uh, either text or Twitter. And I just, I asked him, I said, why did you, do you decommit? And, and he said, well, I made my decision too soon. And I said, well, you know, this kind of comes on the heels of, you know, visiting Georgia and, and really hearing a lot from Georgia and all that stuff. And, and that's kind of where he told me that, yes, you know, Kirby Smart and Georgia are in his head. Um, he likes them quite a bit. They're a big threat. Um, and, and that's why he was confused. Now, I thought he was going to flip to Georgia. I thought he would commit within a week because he was so high on Georgia. He hasn't done that. Now he's holding his water. And, and the longer it goes, momentum-wise, the better it is for Alabama when it comes to him. One more guy that I want to get your thoughts on, um, really a guy that should have already committed but had to postpone things due to the weather and everything else that we've got going on, uh, Ty Simpson uh, at quarterback. Kind of looking like an Alabama Clemson battle there. What are your thoughts on that recruitment and and where he ultimately commits when he does have his ceremony? Yeah, I, I thought this was all Clemson. Um, you know, when I when I first talked to him, he had mentioned, you know, obviously Tennessee because it's an in-state school before all the mess happened there. Uh, Ole yep. Miss, you know, he's friends with Hudson Wolf, who's going to Ole Miss, um, and and Ole Miss recruits Tennessee extremely well. And Lane Kiffin's a fun offensive mind to play for but then it came down to Clemson and the focus was Clemson but Alabama's made a very very strong push and they've made it known that he's their number one guy and when they do that and when they want somebody they usually get them except when they're going up against another mega power like Clemson so you've got Clemson with Deshaun Watson handing the baton to Trevor Lawrence who's handing it to DJ Ongalele and then you've got Alabama you know, with Tua being a first rounder, now Mac Jones being a potential first rounder, Bryce Young 
waiting in the wings. I have no idea. I, I think it's, to me, it's 50, 50. He knows where he wants to go. Otherwise he wouldn't have set the date. My gut says Clemson still, but man, there's a lot of confidence out of Alabama on this one too. So it, it's become an exciting one to cover and, and it's no longer like an easy prediction to make. Right. And you may already be aware of this, Mike, but if not, uh, I'll share with you something that I was told uh, late last night in talking to somebody. Jay Graham apparently now got his first coaching job ever from Ty's father. So that's something that's very interesting. It perked my interest immediately uh, when I was told about that. So it's just a recruiting in general. The chess game is never ending. You could dig on these situations and ties and really never come up with all of them. Um, but I think whether or not Alabama lands the guys that we've mentioned, I expect it to take this new staff a couple of weeks or even months to really gain some traction out on the trail. I know that they're already working and doing their thing. Uh, but I expect Alabama uh, to be, you know, top five, top three, even maybe 2022 class-wise. What are your expectations for that 22 class for Alabama? Do you see it? I know it's not going to be what 21 was, so let's not kid ourselves. It's going to be a while before anybody sniffs a class like that. But what do you think the expectation on your end, what is it for this 22 class for Alabama? I, I think uh, it's always number one. You know, that's that's always the expectation, and that's the – the demand that, that Nick Saban makes. And he, he said he doesn't care about recruiting rankings, and I'm sure he doesn't, and why would he? Um, but he's a competitive individual, as we all know. So if there is something to win, he wants to win it. Um, so 2022, I would expect Alabama to at least be a top five class. I mean, that's just easy to predict, um, possibly number one. And, you know, Ty Simpson's a big part of this as well. I mean, his, his dad, Jason Simpson, that could be where it started to turn. You know, because again, it was Clemson, 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 then Alabama comes in. The relationship with, with Coach Graham is there. All of a sudden, you're thinking twice and you don't know where to go. And you've got two great choices. Um, if they don't get Ty Simpson, they're going to get somebody great. <laughs> That's just the way it works. Um, and if they do get him, then it's going to be interesting to see who Clemson goes on. So I expect 2022 to be great for Alabama. Obviously, on paper, it, it won't be as good as this past year, uh, I don't think. But it's going to be a top three class. I mean, that's one of the easiest things in my job since since Nick Saban really turned the corner in recruiting in the late 2000s has been to predict Alabama as a top five recruiting team because it's only not happened once. They finished mm -hmm. eight one year. That's it. And I think that was Kirby's big year. Georgia finished uh, first that year, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and, you know, you're right, though. Nick Saban, as long as he is the head man down in Tuscaloosa, I don't think recruiting is going to be much of an issue uh, for him and his staff there. Uh, the Crimson Tide are always going to finish in that top five, top three range. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Before we wrap everything up, I want to ask you one more question. Kind of moving a little bit away from recruiting, but it's still tied to recruiting because I know you covered this young man. I got to ask you about Bryce Young and what your expectations are for Mr. Young in this quarterback battle at Alabama that's getting ready to take place if and when spring practice fires up. And what do you think uh, that about Bryce Young makes him capable of being QB1 at a place like Alabama? Yeah, I, you know, at first when I saw Bryce Young, uh, there was a lot of West Coast hype about him, and I, I didn't see it because he was extremely small. And, yep. you know, he's gotten bigger. He, he finished out the, the recruiting year of 2020, I think, about six foot even, 180 pounds. He's probably closer to 190, 195 now. But back when I first heard of him, saw him, you know, he was 5'10", you know, 167 pounds of nothing. And I'm like, this kid can't be – you know, the future, but I thought the same as Kyler Murray and, and some other guys who have obviously done well in college, he just matured. Um, he's, he's got a, a, a very involved family. Um, there was a lot of pressure on him to stay out at USC. Uh, flipping to Alabama was a big deal for him and he did it to become QB one at Alabama and he's not leaving I don't think without accomplishing that. He's just too good. He's accurate. 
Uh, he's, he's got a strong arm for his size. Um, but the thing that really drives people nuts is his ability to extend the play and his ability in the fourth quarter. This is a kid that, that just is a winner. He wins games. He gets out of trouble. You know, if you want to talk about a shorter, smaller Patrick Mahomes type who could throw off angle wow. and, and, and just get, escape from things that shouldn't be escaped from, that's Bryce Young. So that's why, now I thought he would win the job this year. Had there been a spring, this is what's funny, had there been a spring and had there been a, a true, you know, fall, he could have won this job and Mac Jones would be You're right. nowhere. Um, and that's how good Alabama is. So I think not winning the job and, and not looking great in mop-up duty, looked average, is going to be great for him motivation-wise because he's got a chip on his shoulder and he wants to prove that he can be the next in line. So I think he's going to be great. All right. Mike, man, I can't tell you at all enough how much I appreciate you taking your time to join us here on our YouTube channel. We cover all things Alabama Crimson Tide, whether it's football, basketball, men's basketball, softball, baseball. We've got it all. If it's crimson and white, we've got you covered. Appreciate you coming on. Tell everybody, if they don't already know, how they can find you on social media, how they can follow you, and what you've got going on right now and coming up over at Rivals. Yeah, so obviously Rivals.com is, is who pays me. Um, you can find me at Rivals Mike on Twitter. You can find me at Rivals Godfather on Instagram because someone took Rivals Mike and I don't know what they're doing with it. It's not being populated, but they took it. Um, we're on YouTube as well. I have a 10 minute interview with Nick Saban from signing day, which I thought was very intriguing for Alabama fans to view. That's at Rivals video on YouTube. And, and I'm also on TikTok because I'm trying to stay young. Um, and I'm at Rivals Godfather there. So I'm on Facebook too, Mike Farrell Sports, you name it. Uh, and yes, rivals.com is where you start and then you'll be able to find me from there and, and go to our Alabama site. And, but I, I would check out the YouTube channel because there's so many fun, cool things in there. Um, like you get to see Trevor Lawrence when he's 14 years old, throwing the football. Uh, yep. you know, that's the type of stuff that no one else has. So I, I would go to the YouTube channel first. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Todd Talk as much as I enjoyed getting to make it for you all. Before we log out and sign off and everything's wrapped up, if you haven't hit that subscribe button just yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. We upgraded TideTalkSports.com. No paywall. Never charge you a single dollar for premium insider information. And we are growing this YouTube channel at an astronomical rate. And we need your help on our big push to hit 10,000 subscribers here on our channel. Hit that subscribe button for me right now. I certainly will appreciate it, just as sure as the tide will roll. Once again, I'm Ricky Green here for Tide Talk Sports on the Alabama Football News and Rumors channel, and we'll see you next time. Roll Tide.